Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, let's bless his holy name. Let's thank the Lord now for all that he's done for us in spite of ourselves. He's had been good to us in spite of ourselves, and we want to thank him right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise that uh, when we mean this thing. Let, 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 let him know that we thank, we, we're thankful for what he's done for us. This ain't no light thing. We just thank God for all he's done. It's now time that we start our Sunday morning worship. Please stand for our responsive reading. Our responsive reading is found on the inside cover of the bulletin. Responsive reading, which is on the inside cover of our bulletin. Let the church say, Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads as follows A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. All together? She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Thank you. 
morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. We're in the midst of a beautiful time today. This is Memorial Day weekend, a time for us to look back and remember and celebrate the sacrifices that have been made. But we're also in graduation season, a time to look forward to the future and all the promise that our young people are showing. And in this time and in this season, it's important that we make sure that they remember or that we remind them of where the true source lies. Remind them that, look, it's a God that has brought us through everything that we've been through and gotten us to where we are. And that same God is there for them. So, you know, during this time, you know, as we celebrate, as we remember, and as we celebrate our, our young people, uh, again, we have responsibility as Christians, as followers of Christ, to also make sure that they keep in remembrance and that they know uh, from whence their help will come as they go into this uh, new and bright future. Uh, let us bow our heads for prayer. Our Father, we just like to say thank you. Once again, Lord, we are just so happy, Lord, so elated to come into your house, Lord, to have one more opportunity, Lord, to fellowship, Lord, to worship, Lord, to praise, Lord, to learn more about your will and your way for our lives, Lord. Lord God, you are such a good God. You've been so good to us, Lord, and we just thank you. We thank you for leading, guiding, and ordering our steps day after day, Lord, week after week, year after year, Lord, because we realize, Lord, that without you, you know, nothing worthwhile would be possible, Lord. So, Lord God, we, we are grateful. God, and we're grateful right here in this ministry also, Lord, for the leadership and the ordering of our steps that you've provided, Lord. Lord, you've brought us through so much, and we're grateful and we're thankful for it, Lord. Lord, and while we're thanking you, Lord, we also want to continue to pray to you, Lord, for your continued leadership and guidance, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you guide our pastor, Lord, all of our church leaders, Lord, and each and every member, Lord, that we might be able to do what you've called us to do, Lord. Lord, that we might be able to let our light shine so that others might see you, Lord, see the you that's inside of us. So, Lord God, we realize that we need you. We need you each and every day, Lord. Lord, and while we're here, Lord, we also pray for our city, Lord. Lord, we pray for our city leaders, Lord. We pray for our law enforcement, Lord. We pray, pray for the people of this city, Lord. Again, that we might realize from which cometh our help, that we might realize that you are the source, Lord, that we might go unto you, Lord, when we find ourselves in need, when we find ourselves lacking, Lord, because you are the answer. We realize that, Lord, that you are the answer to whatever our need is. And, Lord, we are grateful and we are thankful. And finally, Lord, this morning, once again, we just want to pray for our graduates, Lord. Lord, as they enter into this new time and this new stage in their lives, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you build them up, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you lead and guide them, Lord, so that they can handle whatever it is that comes at them, Lord. Prepare them, Lord, for this next stage of life, Lord. Order their steps, Lord. Lord God, we're so grateful and we're so thankful, Lord. Thankful that you sent your son, Jesus. Thankful that you are who you are. Lord, in this day, we just want to celebrate you, Lord. Lord, once again, thank you, Lord. In your darling son, Jesus' name, Lord, we pray all of this prayer. Amen. This concludes our devotion for this morning. Thank you.
ourselves and we just thank him for all that he's done. Amen? Amen. 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 We on our way to a good celebration today also in worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. We've come to that portion of our service right now where we're going to acknowledge our visitors, all who are not on Black Chapel's Road. We'd like for you to stand at this time. If you're not on Black Chapel's Road, you're visiting here with us for the first time, we'd like for you to stand that we may be able to acknowledge you. Amen. And then all who are viewing uh, on the World Wide Web, we uh, also uh, thank God for you viewing with us if you are visitors. Amen. And here at Black Chapel, we like to love you with the love of the Lord. We thank all of our visitors. Come on, Black Chapel. We love you with the love of the Lord. We thank God for you coming out, uh, worshiping him with us now in spirit and in truth. And we just thank you so much. We love you. God for you. Our sincere prayer here at Black's Chapel for you is that something sang about, something testified about, and specifically something preached about uh, uh, by our pastor through the Holy Spirit would continue to strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now we have our announcements by Sister Love. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Good morning again, Black's Chapel. Good morning. Our announcements are as follows. Vacation Bible School will be held in person on June 1st through 3rd, 2022, beginning at 6 p.m. nightly. The theme for this year will be Rocking Rampage. 
Trusting God Through Life's Ups and Downs. Amen. Again, that's on June 1st through 3rd, 6 p.m. nightly. Amen. Greater Tree of Life Deliverance, 1865 West Capitol Street, will pre presents the 2022 Church Anniversary Homecoming. Amen. This afternoon at 3 p.m., the attire is all white. Amen. The Black Chapel Church family is cordially asked to pray for and support Restoration Conference 2022. That's a free conference geared towards but not limited to to youth, young adults, and their parents. The conference will be held at the Rose E. McCoy Auditorium at Jackson State University on July 30th at 9 a.m. It's hosted by Proverbs 3 and 6 Ministries. Our very own evangelist, Cynthia Hill, will be the keynote speaker. Sunday's best, Dathan Thickpen, will be ministering in song along with other familiar program participants. Amen. Although you may register at the door beginning at 8, Early registration is recommended. You may also register at Eventbrite. Just search for Restoration Conference 2022. The event begins at 9 a.m. Amen. Amen. The Jackson District Deaconess, I'm sorry, Jackson District Congress of Christian Education end of school celebration will be Saturday, June 4th at 12 to 2. New Bethel MB Church on Coverson Avenue. Live music, free food, snow cones, lemonades, fun games, and gospel tracks fun and love. Amen. We also have Greater Mount Bethel Church will be hosting a summer math lab 2022. They're looking forward to unlocking the secrets of math and how it can help each of us mm. every day. So each, we should have math in front of us each day, especially this summer children. That the simple that simple when you really understand what you're asking numbers would what, what it would do for you. Mm. They will meet each day from ten to two, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They will have breaks and snacks. They ask that you provide ten dollars for the week, which covers the materials needed as well as the refreshments. Again, that's Greater Mount Bethel Church on Robinson Road. And if you're interested in a Youth Day t-shirt, please see Sister Jackie Turner. Raise your hand, Sister Turner. And I have another announcement. Okay. We are excited to finally resume our night clinic services at Jackson High. Our night clinic was established for patients who work and go to work, go to school during the day, and we were sad to lose this service at the height of the pandemic. Now we're back in service. Amen. The night clinic will open on Tuesday through Thursday until 7 p.m. That's the Jackson Hines Clinic, nightly clinic. <laughs> and we have some acknowledgments on our, before we do our graduates, we have Brandon Edwards, the son of Rodney and Joetta Edwards, he finished the first year of college with honors. <laughs> he was also awarded the 2022 Dr. George C. Washington III Memorial Scholarship, Amen. and it was presented to him by the Alabama A&M Alumni Association of Mississippi. Congratulations, Amen. Brandon. He's here, he's here with us today. And also his brother, Braylon, he's an AB honor roll student at Madison Middle School. Congratulations, Brandon and Braylon. Okay, our birthdays for the week. We have Gaston Ross on May 31st. On June 1st, we have Evangelist Barbara Hines Woodard. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> On June 2nd, we have Deacon Danny Bennett. Yes. And Courtney Wilson. If there are any more birthdays or anniversaries for this week, um, would you please let us know? Otherwise, happy birthday, members, and happy anniversary. <laughs> Our prayer 
Davis. We have Cleveland Bingham. He's at CMMC. Donald Bennett, brother of Deacon Daniel Bennett. Deacon Charles and Sister Madeline Bell. Tyler Pfizer. That's the nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer. We have Brother Turner Curry, Joshua Henderson, and Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson. And our bereaved uh, members, and with sympathy, we have the family of Mother Jessie Bell Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer and the demise of their nephew, Charles Hughes, and Sister Mary Hayes and the demise of her daughter. The funeral services were held on yesterday at 1 p.m. at West Haven. Continue to pray for our sick and shut in as well as our bereaved members. And also remember it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Okay, now the moment we're waiting for. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, just keep moving forward. With the parents of the graduates, as I call their name, if you want to, you can join them up here as, as they get presented. So we will now start our graduate ceremony. First, we'll have Sister Joetta Edwards. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As parents, uh, one of our greatest joys is to see our children grow, Amen. mature, Amen. and reach various milestones in their lives. Graduation is one of those milestones. Yeah. When my son graduated last year, he was shown so much kindness and generosity, and I was just so overwhelmed with it till I decided this year I would do something for our graduates. So I decided to extend a little bit to our graduates for this year. And I hope and pray that for all of our graduates this year, no matter the age, no matter uh, what grade, high school, college, or whatever, that you'll wake up every day grateful for where you are, Amen. hopeful for a better tomorrow, right. and the vision to be greater and reach higher heights and deeper depths, knowing that God is always on your side and that your church is always behind you. Amen. 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 Okay, first we will have Jabari Robinson, Raymond High School. Jabari Cortez Robinson is a graduate of Raymond High School. He's the SB Live Player of the Week, Amen. Priority Bank Player of the Week, two-time Dandy Dozen, two-time MVP Rumble of the South, <laughs> District 6 4A MVP, right. Class 4A Championship MVP, right. the National uh, the National Society of High School Scholars Honor Society, mm. Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, Amen. over 10 dual enrollment courses from Heinz Community College, mm. Mississippi <laughs> Distinguished Graduate, yeah. Special Honors Graduate, Honor Roll of the Year, uh. Top 20 in his class, <laughs> ACT Work Keys Silver Level yeah. recipient, seven offers of full academic athletic scholarship. Oh. He will be attending Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College on a full academic scholarship. <laughs> where he will continue his academic and athletic career. Right. Jabari's goal is to attend a four-year college and university and receive his bachelor's degree in computer engineering. All Jabari right. Robinson. Okay, next we have Tia Robinson. Yeah. Callaway High School. Tia is a graduate of, Cal well, will graduate from Callaway High School. She will be attending Jackson State University. Her major is biology. Awards, she has a soccer award, ROTC, and Chargerette. Oh. 
She was also senior maid and duchess. Tia, would you please come back over and mom? Tia will be, will be receiving a $500, book, $500 book stipend from Church Women United of Jackson oh. Union. graduate is Cordarius Cobbins, Murrah High School. Cordarius plans to attend Holmes Community College for welding. He's the son of Tanya Merritt, Cordarius Cobbins. Okay, we'll move to our college graduates. First, we have Ms. Denavia Bell. All right. As she's coming, I'll read her accolades. Denavia Bell, we're congratulating you on receiving your Master's of Science in Clinical and Mental Health Counseling. from Jackson State University. Genevia is a resident of Jackson, Mississippi. Her plan after graduation is to obtain her PhD in Ed Leadership. Come on! We celebrate you, Genevia. Genevia yeah. is a member of the Jackson State University Delta Pi chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. She, is, she also celebrated make, makeup MUA entrepreneur in Jackson. Mississippi, Amen. honors, she had job promotion, uh -huh. teacher of the year. Ah. She's the new science high school coach for JPS. Ah. Congratulations, Denavia. How about D? D Bell. <laughs> okay, next we have Dr. Lucille Brown. All right. All right. Come on here. Go get her now. Go get she will be receiving her Doctor of Philosophy in Theology, speciali specialization in African American ministry, Newburgh Theological Seminary in Edmondville, Indiana. Reverend Dr. Lucille Brown's degree. Reverend Dr. Lucille's Brown degree was conferred on May 2nd. She will travel to Evansville, Indiana on June 9th Amen. to participate in the graduation exercises. Ah. After receiving and accepting her call into the ministry, being ordained and licensed, she was compelled to earn a degree in theology. Amen. After receiving her master's from New Orleans Baptist Theological Theology Seminary, New Orleans. She matriculated to New New Burr Theological Seminary. She is passionate about the Great Commission of Romans 10, 14, and 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Come on. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. Romans 10, 14. That is her plan. Amen. We have another graduate, Corbin Divinity. Corbin received her Master's of Biomedical Sciences from University Medical Center. She 
She will be working on research for a year. She plans to attend medical school this time next year. Okay, we do have a young man. He's one of our elementary graduates. Mr. Jaden Harris, would you please come forward? He's a graduate of Highland Elementary. And we have one over here on the drum. We have Stephen Brooks. He graduated from Louisiana State University. With a Bachelor of Science in Accounting. He's a member of the Accounting Club, student member of the LCPA, student member of the MDCPA, whatever that is. He plans to study for and take the CPA, I know what that is, within the next year. Congratulations, Stephen. And we have Sister Kiara Applewhite. She received her master's degree in early childhood education from Jackson State University. Congratulations. Congratulations to all our graduates. Samantha, Samantha, would you come forward? Samantha. Okay, on the door. She's serving on the door. Amen. One of our ushers. She's on her post. Come on. If you will come on up. Again, congratulations to all our graduates. Amen. And we look forward to hearing about your future endeavors. Amen. Congratulations. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to hear about some good things in our lives. We hear about all these killings and stuff, but look what God has done. Look!
Once again, good morning, Black Chapel. We've reached that point in our service where it's time for us to bring our tithes and offering unto the Lord. Here at Black Chapel, we have multiple ways of giving. Uh, you can give online through a Givelify account. You can come through any day of the week and drop it off in our drop box on the west end of the church. Or you can give right here in service. Uh, at this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers.
for prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord God, we approach your throne of grace and mercy right now. Asking you, oh God, to deliver us from the evil one. Be with our graduates. Be with our families. You said that you never leave us nor forsake us. We know you will. And we're thanking you right now for your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. You've been so good to us, oh God. And we just want to pause to say thank you. For we know that the flesh wars against your spirit. And we know, oh God, that you have overcome the world through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Satan has power, but you have all power. All power. And we thank you for this offering. We pray now that it be used for the purpose in which you intended it. In the mighty precious name of Jesus, we pray now and give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for praise. Come on, we can do better than that. I said, let's give the Lord a hand clap for praise. He's been so good. He's been so kind. He's been merciful to us. Before we get into this song, there's a little gadget that a lot of us have. It's called a Fitbit. And in that Fitbit, it counts each and every one of your steps. And it's not coincidental. I believe that, that the Lord works in order. The opening prayer, he asked God to order our steps. If you were listening and paying attention, he said it not one time, not two times, but he said it three times. I took that as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because that's what we're going to need in order for our steps to be ordered by the Lord. Now, we've heard this song thousands of times. And we've sang it two or three hundred of times. But this time, this time, I want everybody in the building under the sound of my voice, warm blood running through your veins to ask the Lord to order your steps. Because we got somewhere to be. We got places to go. Lord, Lord, come into my life. If it's not my mindset, change it. If it's not the way my heart is set up, change it. Lord, fix my soul, make me whole again. If you're broken, mend my broken pieces. All of my steps in your word. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord.
sound like. It sounds just like it was made in heaven. And every good and every perfect gift From the joyful noise in which it made right here at Black's Chapel this Sunday morning. Let's give this great choir the Lord. Order my steps in your word. What a wheel. or to have warning our God to order our steps we're saying Lord if we get a little too high if we get too high just reach up and pull us back down. If we get a little too low, would you just reach down and lift us back up? If we drift too far off to the right or to the left, reach out and pull us back in. Because we want our steps to be ordered by you. Not just the gender of man, but the species of man. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Not the gender, but the species. Which include one man also. Come on. Right. The steps of a good man yeah. are ordered by the Lord. Say that, Say that. And though he may stumble along the way, yeah. but I declare he will not utterly be cast down. Because God can and God will make a way out of nowhere. And his average is 1,000. Perfect. Perfect. We're so blessed and so thankful to have my niece, Sister Franchet Blunt, standing in for Sister Daughter Thick PM directing our choir this morning. Amen. And what a great, wonderful work she has always done in doing so. And I'm just so thankful that God made her available to come and to stand in for such a thick pen today. And when I look at our women choir, I can truly say you are on Back to from which you get from where you came. Back toward 100. Amen. Amen. I don't believe in settling. And since I am the pastor of this ministry, and I'm the shepherd, 
we're not going to settle for nothing less than that which God willed for us to have. We asked and he gave. And he is going to re-give again. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I love you. Thank God for you. Being in your place. Thank God for Mother Curry. Let's give her a talking about a rich spirit to possess. Oh, yes. Yes. Talk about it. She wasn't able to make it out on Wednesday night for rehearsal. It's right. She thought that they was going to rehearse Saturday also. Right. And when she found out that they wasn't going to rehearse Saturday, she personally called me and explained her situation mm. in feeling and thinking in such a way. And she asked, where am I here? Will I still be able to sing with the choir? God made her able. And that's which God give it, no one can take Come it. Come on here. No one. And I just thank God for the spirit that she carries around inside of her and the will and determination to allow the Lord to order her steps and he ordered her right into the choir Amen. and I challenge all of the others who has not as of yet entered back into the laws to allow the Lord to order yours also so many great things are happening our graduates, we just thank God yeah. for you. Oh, yes, we do. What an accomplishment. What an achievement. What a blessing you are. First unto the Lord. Second unto yourself. And then unto your parents. What a blessing you are indeed. And to this ministry. It is just such a blessing to see God at work. And our God is always about lifting up and not destroying. And as Paul said, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man all the blessings that God has stored up for those who love him. So I say unto the graduates, stay in love with the Lord. Amen. 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 Stay in love with the Lord. And you will receive every blessing that God has seeded the love way with. Every blessing that the Lord has seeded your love way with. Our God always lie way ahead of us. God has already seeded your love way with blessings. And all we have to do is continue that way to reap every blessing, every, every blessing that our God has seated our love way with. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We just so great and Amen. so proud of one giving their life for a cause greater than them, That's their right. own, Amen. and themselves. 
the greatest office that one can hold is that of a servant. A servant. One who serves the Lord and one who is willing to serve one's country. It doesn't get any better than that. Amen. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence takes us by force. Bible in one hand and a sword in the other. Stay on the wall. It takes both. The word and the sword. Because the enemy is taking no hostages. He come but to steal, kill, and to destroy. I thank God for her and for all of her kind. Who's taking such a stand against the wiles and the fiery darts of the enemy. What a blessed people we are indeed. Oh, yes, we are. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the third chapter of the book of Philippians. The third chapter of the book of Philippians. And it includes the 12th and the 13th verse. Two very familiar scriptures. And those two passages of scripture reads as following. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. But I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Mm. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. What an awakening. What a clarity. When it comes to one's mind, pertaining to one's God. What an awakening. And what a clarity. When it comes to one's mind, pertaining to one's Brethren, I count not myself to have. It doesn't get any better than that. When the mind conformed to that train of thought, it will have reached its zenith. It's all time high. Brethren, I count not. We're we're talking about a highly decorated figure of a man. A man who had exalted, as 
Dr. Martin Luther King would say to the mountaintop. And even after getting there, up there, and looking down on all of his accomplishments, he was able to say, I count not myself. Because there's one thing I know. If we just know that, If we can just come to know that, that one thing, that is not about self, but is all God. All that is good is of God. I count not myself. Let us think on this thought. Knowing your opponent. Knowing your opponent. According to neuroscience, The average person use less than 10% of his or her brain capability. According to neuroscience, the average person use less than 10% of his or her brain capability. Which means that over 90% of our brain's capability lies dormant inside of us. which means that our God has placed potential inside of us that we really never tap into. That the average person really never taps into. And the reason being is because we're too easy to become satisfied. We're far less than God's best for our lives. We're too easy to develop that old that will do attitude. We're too easy to become, to become satisfied with less than God's best for our lives. But Black's Chapel, we should never be willing Willing to accept second best, second class, second place, anything, as long as first is available. Never be willing to accept second place, second best. Anything, as long as the best is available. So let us not allow ourselves to be intimidated by challenge nor by failure. Let us not allow ourselves to be intimidated by challenge nor by failure. Because challenge is nothing more than one of God's agents 
that he used to test and to prove our patience, our will, and our perseverance. Challenge is nothing more than one of God's agents that he used to test and to prove our patience, our will, and our perseverance. And failure never spelled loss nor defeat. Never. Failure never spelled laws nor defeat but rather failure is nothing more than a setup for a comeback never fail never spell laws nor defeat but it is only a setup for a comeback. Because failure has within its content, knowledge, wisdom, and experience in which our God will for us to extract and apply to our next attempt. That is reason why, that is the reason why nothing beat a failure but another. Another. Attempt. Failure never spells laws nor defeat. Failure is nothing more than a setup for a comeback. Because failure has within its content knowledge, wisdom, and experience in which our God will us to extract from it and apply it unto our next attempt. Let us never allow ourselves to be intimidated by challenge nor by failure. My grandfather used to always tell me, he, he would say, boy, you will try anything once, won't you? I can't think of anything that you won't try at least once. And what he was saying was that you're not afraid of challenge and you're not afraid of failure. Let us never Accept failure as an answer, not as an end result. Amen. And the Apostle Paul's life was a testament of that charge. The Apostle Paul's life was a testament of never accepting, never being afraid, not intimidated. The Apostle Paul's life was a testament of that charge. The Apostle Paul was born in a season when statue and statue and, and brute strength ruled. Paul was born during the dark ages when only the strong survived. Paul was a man who had many physical challenges. First of all, he was very, very short in stature. He was a short man. And not only was he short in stature, but he was also bow-legged. And that made him to appear to be even shorter than what he really was. 
And not only was he short in stature and bow legged, but he also was bald headed. And that made him to appear to be even shorter than what he really was. You remember the era of the Afro. When the Afro made us look like we were at least five or six inches taller than what we really were. Paul was bald headed. Short in stature, bow legged and bald headed. His eyes fitted close together and sunk deep back into the skull. The only thing that Paul had oversized about himself was his nose, long and crooked. But Paul rose to the occasion and became all of his challenges master. Paul spoke several languages fluently. Paul became a Pharisee, a member of the upper ruling class among the Jews. Paul was one of the keepers and one of the guardians of all of God's religious laws. And Paul became one of the greatest biblical scholars and theologians of all time. Out of the 27 books of the New Testament, Paul wrote 14 of them. Paul wrote over half of the New Testament. And out of the 66 books of the Bible, Paul wrote over one-fifth of the entire content of the Bible. Over one-fifth of the entire content of the Bible. And when Paul had made himself ready to write this letter to the church down at Philippi, Paul had come to know who his greatest opponent was. From trial and error, Paul had come to know who his greatest opponent was. And it wasn't the enemy externally, but it was the Paul that lived inside of him. Paul had come to know and learn that he was his own, his, his worst enemy. He could very easily become his worst enemy. The word of God says, fear no man. Because man can only destroy the body. But if you're going to fear someone, fear God. The one who can destroy both the body and soul and cast the soul in hell. Paul had come to know his opponent. That his true opponent was the Paul that lived inside of him. So in spite of all of Paul's achievements, in spite of all of Paul's accomplishments, in spite of all of Paul's accolades, when he wrote this letter to the church down at Philippi, the first thing he wanted them to know, I count not myself to have. And right there is where so many of us fall off the horse. I count not myself to have. Right there is where so many of us fall off the horse. Too often when God bless us with 10 cent more than cab fare home, no one can tell you anything. Not even God. You graduate, you listen close. I count not myself. Right there is where so many of us fall off the horse. Because it seems like when God bless us with 10 cent more than cab fare home, can't no one tell us anything. Not even God. But Paul was one who refused to accept less than God's best for his life. I count not myself. You see, Black Chapel, when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, when you become a born-again child of God, Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he become a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Well, the first thing that passed away is that old man that lives inside of you. That old man dies. That old man is crucified with Christ on the cross at Calvary. And the first new thing you ought to receive is you are endowed with the Holy Spirit. You are endowed with the Holy Spirit. And once you've been endowed by 
by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit impregnates you with all kinds of gifts, talents, abilities, and capabilities. I say, once you've been impregnated by the Holy Spirit, he in, he, 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 once you've been endowed by the Holy Spirit, he impregnates you with all kinds of gifts, talents, abilities, and capabilities. And the enemy, the enemy is out there watching you. And the enemy will do all that he can and use everything that he can to cause you to experience a spiritual miscarriage. A spiritual miscarriage. Meaning that once you've been endowed with the Holy Spirit and he impregnates you with all kinds of gifts, talents, abilities, and capabilities. The enemy is out there to trip you up. The enemy is out there to cause you to have a spiritual miscarriage. Meaning that along your way to the mountaintop, you are going to experience some labor pains along the way. You are going to experience some labor pains along the way. The devil's going to try to take that baby And his primary path of, of attack is that he's out to manipulate your mind and lure you away from the will and the ways of God. He's out to manipulate your mind by luring you away from the wills and the ways of God. That is why Paul told the church at Philippi, I count not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have apprehended. You see, the enemy wants you to think that you have finally arrived. The enemy wants you to think that you finally landed where you want to be. The enemy wants you to think that you got it all together. The enemy wants you to think that you're, in this, that you're instructive, indestructible. The enemy wants you to feel comfortable inside of your own skin. Not only does he want you ignorant, but he also wants you comfortable in your ignorance. He wants you to feel comfortable inside of your own skin. I have arrived. I have made it to the top, to the mountaintop. I count myself to have apprehended. Not only does he want you, does he want you, does he want you ignorant, but he wants you to settle down and comfortable in your ignorance. Make sure you don't graduate from the law and his ways and his will. Don't you allow the enemy to cause you to have a spirit of miscap and lose that baby that the Holy Spirit impregnated you with. The gifts, the talents, the abilities, and the capabilities that he has impregnated you with. He's out to manipulate your mind and lure you away from the will and the ways of God. And after that, Paul said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. There's always one thing you need to hold on to. I don't care what else you got to let go of. You always should hold on to one thing. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. You see, the enemy want to pry you a loose from that one thing. The enemy wants you to set down in the body of Christ. He wants you to stop coming to Sunday school. He wants you to stop coming to worship service. He wants you to stop giving your tithes and your offering. He wants you to discontinue your proud lift. He wants you to set down. He wants you to go on maternity leave. Sit down. He wants the man and the woman of God sitting down. Paul said, that's one thing I'm going to hold on to. And that's the one thing the enemy want to take away from you. He wants you sitting down in the body of Christ. He don't want you attending Sunday school. 
He don't want you coming out to worship service. He don't want you giving your tithes and your offering. He don't want you to continue with your prayer life. He wants you to go on maternity leave. So the question that each of us should ask of ourselves, am I operating in my office at the capacity where God doesn't have to replace me in order to accomplish his mission? Because the enemy wants you out. Doing nothing. Am I operating in my office to the capacity where God doesn't have to replace me in order to accomplish his purpose or his mission? How well am I operating as a musician? As a choir member? As a minister? As an evangelist? As a pastor? As a mother? As a deacon? A trustee? As an usher? As a member of the body of Christ? How well am I operating? Am I operating at the capacity where God doesn't have to replace me in order to accomplish his mission? The enemy wants you to forsake the assembly of yourselves with the will and the ways of God. Oh, I should have took President Byron's place yesterday. I should have been here that week. Because one thing in the world doesn't mean that another ain't going to tell It's another well learned, groomed, and taught. Paul was all of that, but Paul, he had come to himself and realized that I can do all things through. Through. Christ, which strengthens me. The enemy is out to manipulate your mind by luring you away. From the will and the ways of God. He wants you sitting down in your faith. Sitting down in your salvation. Doing nothing. Am I operating in my office at the capacity where God doesn't have to replace me in order to accomplish his mission? And thirdly, Paul said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I'm going to do. I am going to forget those things which are behind me. Now, there are some things that the enemy doesn't want you to forget. He's going to keep placing them before you. He's going to keep running them frozen through your mind. There are some things that the enemy doesn't want you to forget. He doesn't want you to forget your past sins. He doesn't want you to forget your past shortcomings. He doesn't want you to forget your past failures. He doesn't want you to forget your past, your past fears, doubts, and uncertainty. There are some things that the enemy, he just doesn't want you to forget. The enemy wants you corralled inside of a habitat which is found outside of God's will for your life. He wants you confined. Inside of a habitat which is found outside of God's plan for your life. There's some things that he doesn't want you to forget. And he's going to do all he can. Was. And that's why Paul went on a little further and said, with me, I'm going to press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. Ain't gonna let nobody, nothing turn me away from the will and the ways of my God. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. You see, before the enemy can get to you, he has to go through you. 
it's not God that the enemy has to go through. It's you. It's you. Yes, sir. And the enemy is not out to destroy God's ministry. But the enemy is out to destroy your ministry. He can't touch God's. But he has a reach long enough to touch yours. by attempting to lure you away from the will and the ways of God. By attempting to lure you to just take a seat in the body of Christ and do nothing. Become idle. By trying to lure you into thinking that I got it now. I can handle it from here. I, I, I can walk it on in from here. I done done this here now. I, I got this here now. I can make it from here. He wants you to sit down. Not only does he want you ignorant, but he wants you comfortable inside of your ignorance. Self-centered and comfortable. headed right back where you came from. The things that we're supposed to forget. The places that we're supposed to forget. The experiences, the works, the things that we're supposed to forget. He wants you to revisit them again. Brother, and I count not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing I'm going to do, I am going to forget those things which are behind me. And I'm going to reach forth toward those which lie ahead. I'm going to press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. Not going to allow anybody nor anything to sway me away from allowing the Lord to order my footsteps. All of my steps. The door of the church is open by way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. Once again, I say to our viewing audience, our virtual audience, this invitation also is extended unto you. If there's something been said or done throughout the activity of our worship service this morning that has touched you in any kind of way that may have created a thought or feeling or desire in your heart, your soul, and your spirit, first of all, to come to know the Lord in the point of your sins. The word of God says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And not only does God want you saved, but he also wants you safe. He wants you encamped inside of a fold. Black shepherd may not be the choice of your choosing, but there's a home out there that God has put in place just for you. And if by chance it may be black shepherd, not just to those who have come to know him in the part of the sin, but those who've already known him, been saved, sanctified, and filled with God's precious Holy Spirit. And that little quiet, still voice that's spoken into your heart and your spirit and say, this is home. All you have to do is write in our comment section or inbox your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual member, and I will personally contact you and receive you into the body of Christ and into the ministry into the ministry. What an awesome mighty God we serve. An omnipresent God in all places at the same time. And he's right there where you are. Willing and ready to receive you unto himself. I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That he may prove, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. 
and that is that none shall perish but all shall be saved what an awesome mighty God we serve God bless you God bless you we're getting ready now to partake of the Lord's Supper and all of those of you can re who can remain, please, ma'am, please, sir, remain and partake of the sacred sacrament with the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family. We'll be back very shortly to serve you.
Thank you. 
Let us give thanks. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, we come before thy presence and this table with bowed heads and humbled hearts. We come, Lord God, as students and children of obedience. Jesus asks of us to come and to do this as often as we will. Father, we come celebrating the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gift that only a God like you, the one and only true living God, could have gave. Thank you for the giving. And not only that, but your son, he mirrored you by giving his greatest gift. And that was his life, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Father, we pray your blessings upon this table and this content, not knowing all the hands that these items may have been fallen upon, but knowing that if you just breathe upon it, you're going to sanctify it, cleanse it to such a degree where you'll be able to receive it back unto yourself. And that is our will and desire, that you will be able to receive us back unto yourself. We pray, Lord God, that if there's anything on our minds and hearts that shouldn't be, that you lead us and guide us, and we be faithful followers of you away as far as the east lies from the west, from those things that are not pleasing unto you. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we do indeed pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. container receive our cracker. This is the bread that represents the Lord, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for the remission of all of our sins. Let us eat. Now the next layer, which reveals our drink. 
This is the wine that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which shed it for remission of all of our sins. Let us drink. After Jesus' disciples had eaten of the Lord's Supper, they rose and sung a hymn and marched out to the Mount of Olives. Let us please stand for the singing of our hymn, which will be followed by fellowship and dismissal. Our hymn. 